emotional regulations just kind of like keeping your emotions relevant to the situation or even the intensity relevant to the situation. I think a lot of people with borderline personality disorder have really intense emotions. So if there was like a spectrum of one emotion, we just kind of shoot right to the strongest point of it. So which is sometimes a good thing because there are positive emotions. So it means they can be really joyous or empathetic, but something that triggers a little bit of sadness in a mentally healthy person can make me incredibly sad. You know, sometimes it bubbles up, it's stronger than others, and it's hard to just continue on with life when you're thinking negatively about yourself. The borderline personality disorder is a serious mental health condition. Individuals that live with borderline personality disorder have significant difficulties with their identity or their sense of themselves. They have difficulties with relationships marked by sensitivity in how they respond in relationships. They can end up in hospital after suicide attempts or self-harm or in the context of these relationship difficulties. Also, people living with borderline personality disorder can have other problems with their impulses as well that can lead to difficulties with substance abuse, um, other kinds of self-destructive patterns in their relationships or gambling or spending problems. It's commonly spoken about that there is a genetic contribution uh, to the disorder, but also uh, there are a range of different developmental problems or developmental adversities that individuals are exposed to that can cause difficulties, ranging from early attachment problems, early problems with neglect and abuse, and also trauma problems throughout the individual's development. So it's a very common problem in our, all of our crisis and health settings. We've drawn from many services to support our person living with BPD, um, primarily medical services. So uh, initially the GP and psychologists or psychiatrists, um, counsellors, um, different kinds of therapists. Our family's been involved with drug and alcohol services and housing services. It has had uh, quite an impact on our family. We've all learnt a lot, certainly about how people manage and express their emotions and also about being really sensitive to people who face challenges in their lives. I see a lot of people improve a lot and I see people maintain that improvement over years. It's not that life then becomes a, a thing of joy and beauty all the time. I wish it was so for all of us. There are still problems with a vulnerability to anxiety and to depression, but those can be treated as well. So that people remain somewhat sensitive, certainly tend to be very compassionate, empathic people and to care a lot about issues and about people in the world. But, um, they feel generally that their life is more worth living. There's a growing expertise in a range of evidence-based psychotherapies that can have been demonstrated to show uh, enormous benefits for people living with BPD. So there's increasing optimism about the outcomes for all of these specialised treatments that we can now offer and that initially involves uh, reducing crisis presentations around self-harm and hospitalisation and suicide attempts and then over time as much greater um, benefits in terms of the general quality of life that the person leads, the quality of their relationships and much, much reduced relapse rates. Some of the feedback and I guess we have seen firsthand of individuals that do recover from um, the borderline personality disorder symptoms are things like a sense of calmness, being able to regulate how they feel, um, preventing them from getting into that crisis point, so being able to be more in the moment. There is no one recovery story for everyone. What it might look like to one individual, and what we have seen in the past, is people would turn to full-time employment, other people rebuild their relationships with their loved ones, um, get into education. It's a very, very treatable illness with a great prognosis. Pretty much all of the treatments for borderline personality disorder are relatively intensive, often from a year to two years in duration. So it requires having systems of care which can offer those forms of treatment and that can be an individual therapist or practitioner or it can be a, a service approach or a, a group based approach to that kind of treatment. DBT affected my life pretty well. It is confusing and scary at first but it really improved my self-worth a lot. I 
I'm a lot more mindful of myself and my symptoms so I can catch myself out a lot more. Things don't snowball as much anymore because I'm able to pick up on them. I guess having the will to accept that maybe some things about yourself aren't perfect but that's okay. Not blaming yourself or holding yourself accountable. I think the wait for me was about seven months. I was actually in a DBT skills only program which meant that one-on-one -on -one therapy had to be self-sourced and self-financed which is difficult if you can find a therapist that will take someone with a personality disorder and bulk bills and Medicare only lasts for 10 sessions a year so the math doesn't really add up. If someone is still waiting on an actual DBT program but they're suffering, if you just, you can Google counselling in your area or if you need someone to talk to you can book a double appointment with your GP or there's Lifeline. There's a growing range of mental health experts who are developing skills in these range of evidence-based treatments and that includes mental health nurses, psychologists, social workers and psychiatrists who are all increasingly able to offer these types of psychotherapies. But what we also hope is that the principles of these psychotherapies, that are very specialist psychotherapies, can be disseminated and can um, be advanced in a range of other settings. So I want to convey that it's really everybody's business. So every practitioner has some level at which they can engage in.